Cranwell, I think what people tend to forget it was the centre of everything that was going on in Dublin. Yeah, was, there was yeah. nothing else, it was the cinema and the Strand Hall. If you're doing anything, I know the different societies would use the Strand Hall. I started coming here in 84. Um, I left school in 84. Um, and this was the main place to be um, every Saturday night. This, is, this was your social media event. Uh, we didn't have all your Facebooks and everything like that. But you knew everyone would be here on a Saturday night. This is where you met everybody. Um, you would be here no matter how ill you were, you would not miss Saturday night here. My first memory of going to the Strand is going to um, Van Williams underneath. Yeah, you know, with the, the council office. Yeah, council office. Yeah, council tax when I first, um, yeah, when I first bought a house and first moved. Yeah, yeah. I do remember. When I was a little girl, I must have been about nine and ten, they used to hold wonderful dances here. People came dressed in their posh frocks. I think it was a boxing night dance. And I can remember my sister-in-law coming over, three on a bike, a motorbike, from Upper Chapel in the snow. They changed at my house and down they came to the Strand. It was a wonderful place to come because of the Strand floor. When I went in the army, this was a thriving uh, dance hall. Every weekend there was a dance here. Um, people used to come from all, all over the place. Raider, uh, the Looted, Hangamak, Upper Chapel, Brecon. It was the centre of the area. Uh, and, uh, um, everything was done here. All the big dances for the organisations were held here. Uh, you know, and things like that, and now this is a vastly improvement of what was here before, because the ceiling used to come down underneath these, these beams. But when we were refurbishing and people used to come in to have a look, uh, Bobby Metcalf and that said, uh, I uh, met my wife here, we're there. It wasn't just in the Strand Hall, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was that knot of wood on the Strand Hall, yeah. and everybody's got their memories yeah. of I always loved um, the dressing rooms were downstairs. They used to come up through that narrow alleyway. The boiler room. The boiler room up on the, yeah, the yeah, stage. Yeah. And this is where you would meet people and strap your stuff. Yeah. Bit of boogie. Many, this, many this marriages were made here. I was going to yeah. say that. Many started here. Yeah. Uh, I remember holding, um, yeah, this school music concert because obviously we don't have a um, hall here at the high school. So as far as a uh, performing space, that's where we used to go. Um, and we used to cart everything over in the morning, like with all the coopers, um, all the equipment, and then have a you know rehearsals there in the afternoon. Um, yeah, and it'd be packed, probably about two or three yeah. and, and parents. And then there's a little kitchen area in the back, so we could do tea and coffee there. Um, yeah, a nice facility. And obviously, you know, since the refurb, it's uh, even better. There wasn't a bar there, was no. there? No. And it was um, Sheila, Sheila McKay, Sheila McKay the, down there, yeah. the tea bar and the, and the burgers yeah, downstairs. Down yeah, so right. you had your drink yeah. and you went in yeah. and that was where you ended the evening and might have had a fight, and a few fights too. Yeah, yeah, there was, but yeah. there was a milk machine just down. Down on by Park, Park Hotel. Yeah, you could put your coin in and have a, you could have a coffee or something, but you could have a, a small cart of milkshake or yeah. milk. During the war years, it was used um, as a munitions. Uh, shop or factory, whatever it was, to make parts for the war, to make um, mines for the war. Uh, that they, and they were here, I think, from 1942 to 1946. And then they moved from here up to Chandra uh, And this was left empty. And apparently, Mr. Mark Lloyd, a very well known man of Bill Wells, he used this place as the wool depot. Well, a couple of months ago we were approached to um, actually design a plaque for the opening of the Strand or the reopening of the Strand um, so, and we were delighted to have the opportunity. Um, I gathered, gathered, gathered a group of pupils together in Year 9 um, who I knew were very very design uh, conscious and, and they, they're looking to take the subject as well. Um, and alongside actually designing the plaque we're actually going to do a history project as well. Um, so the idea was that on a couple of Mondays ago that we went around uh, the local area, had a look um, and sort of gathered um, some research, we did a bit of research on the field to get some ideas for the plaque. 
and we were lucky enough to go up to the quarry up in Upper Gilwa and we managed to source this piece of stone. Um, now, I, the people's intentions were to design the plaque and things, but because we had this beautiful piece, um, we decided that it would be good to actually engrave onto um, acrylic to allow the stone to actually um, to shine through and actually we didn't actually need to put anything else on there. Um, the other thing we're doing is a history project so um, the pupils have been very very busy gathering information and um, about people's memories of the Strand, what the, what the Strand um, used, has been used for because as we know it's been used for many things over, uh, the, over, the, over the years. Um, and basically they created, recreating a window of the strand, so they're looking back through the memories and that was one of the people's ideas. I had a lot of pleasure in the strand hall. I had a lot of pleasure in the strand hall. Yeah. I broke a lot of women's hearts in the strand hall. <laughs> you believe that you believe everything. 